Welcome to More Than Memos. This is the Talking About Techcom series, and today we are excited to have Dr. Jayla Warman with us. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> thanks for joining us. First, before we jump into talking more about the special issue, what does Black TPC mean to you? What does it look like? Thank you so much for that question. Um, and, you know, that could be tricky to define because people define it a little bit differently based off of the research that they do. But for me, it is just the different communicative practices from professional to technical to industry people or folks who are, you know, doing, you know, academic research that reflects the Black lived experience across the diaspora. So it just spans so many different ways of knowing and learning, but it is definitely reflect of the cultural practices of, of Black individuals. So I'm wondering, in the transition and in your conversations with the other co-authors co-author, co and editors of this, why did you decide to move, you know, this event into something that was in a journal? Like why technical communication quarterly? What spoke to you about bringing this really into a special issue format? So good question. I know for me specifically, um, so once we like published the uh, position statement with um, C's and then once we had that resource guide out, it definitely got the conversation going and people talking about, wow, what is like, what is this? Now, we just basically put a name to different practices and areas of research that have already been happening for years. That's kind of like what we did. We put a name to it. And as we know, when you put names to things in our field, it gets people talking, although there may have already been lots of conversation for the folks doing that research. And because our field is so interdisciplinary, um, I think just the timing of it all. I know me, I, I definitely was on board to contribute to it because I was like, this is a moment for us to legitim legitimize the, not only the name, but that this is the area of tech com, that this is not just like a one, one time thing where you can like focus on it and be like, all right, cool. This is like, uh, you know, a nice area that you guys can learn about. But for us to put that special, special issue out, I feel like it kind of just made it more like concrete and it's almost like allowing us to like historicize that this is a term, this is not going anywhere, you know, and although our issue, you know, it, it's a special issue. So there's not tons of articles in there, but the articles that we have, they're very rich, they're very diverse. And I think they show, they give you like just a glimpse of the diversity, but also like the technical advances and the history that uh, has followed Black TPC practices. So that kind of, um, I know for me, was a reason why I said yes to being one of the um, co-editors of the special issue. And I'm so happy that I was able to work alongside my uh, co-authors. Yeah, absolutely. I think when I was reading it too, I was really struck with the diversity of the topics, you know, like topics in the special issue are ranging from using YouTube to understand black hair care to technical communication literacies taken up in black family reunions, touching on themes of liberation, joy, coalition building. I mean, there's really so much in the special issue. And I think that that really speaks to that black technical and professional communication is not just one thing or doesn't look just one way but encompasses a really diverse range of practices and communication strategies um, that will continue to enrich technical mm -hmm. communication in the past and now and also for years to come. So in thinking about just the diverse range of topics, what's something that really resonated with you when you were selecting pieces for the special issue? Mm -hmm. What's something that, that stood out to you in the pieces that actually ended up becoming a part of the special issue of the Black Technical and Professional Communication Journal? Well, you know, I'm biased, so I love them, <laughs> love them all. I um, actually assigned the special issue in my graduate class, and we had like the most amazing conversation about all the ish, uh, all the articles. Um, so I am biased, but one that stood out to me um, for uh, obvious reasons for people who follow me is the one about hair. 
I really loved um, how the authors were able to talk about how, you know, we can be advocates learning about Black hair um, and how um, influencers and different people have been like using YouTube to educate others about Black hair because it has been so politicized. Um, and there's a history and there's scholars who do amazing work on women's hair, black hair and professionalism and discriminatory practices against hair. So that one resonated with me. Absolutely. And I think some of the sites that we get to hear about in the special issue, for example, you were just talking about YouTube shows that technical communication isn't just happening in one place either. It's mm -hmm. happening on all sorts of platforms and all different sorts of, you know, digital and non-digital spaces. And that looking into that a little bit more really helps us understand technical communication just kind of broadly as a practice um, and yeah. as something that we could think about, you know, very broadly speaking in our classrooms, mm -hmm. in our work, in industry, so on and so forth. Exactly. So I'm also wondering, because I think technical communication and maybe just like the nation as a whole is really undergoing this increasing attunement to social justice. Mm -hmm. I know the social justice turn has gained increasing traction in technical communication within the last couple of years. And so I'm interested in hearing from you about how you think this special issue enriches or supports these ongoing conversations about social justice in tech com. Well, that's a good question. Um, I think what the special issue does is it shows how we need to be more action oriented in our field and like kind of like that's what the new wave is not just talking about these conversations especially because people have kind of been talking about social justice and tc for a few years maybe over a decade you know like so it's been there um but not only the special issue but just over the you know, the last two years with um, the pandemic, I think we're moving now towards uh, what needs to take place and what can you now do um, as an ally or as an advocate. And that is kind of the research coming out of, you know, technical communication after the social justice tur uh, turn, you know, what's the next steps. And I think the next step is using your voice now that you have the knowledge and we have this research. Um, so because we are aware of ways that we can be advocates, ways that we can begin to amplify historically marginalized voices, um, taking that knowledge and the power that you hold and being, um, being an advocate, doing something about it. Um, Dr. Natasha Jones has a great piece uh, that's called, you know, the technical communicator as advocate. And although that came out before this, I think it's still so timely because she's talking about in that piece how you can be an advocate and what that looks like. Absolutely. I think it also goes to show that these conversations are not even necessarily new conversations. We have to, as you said, <laughs> names the things, but the idea that technical communication is a diverse set of practices that is practiced by and important to historically marginalized communities mm -hmm. is an ongoing conversation within technical and professional communication. Yeah. And readers in this field and people who are interested in practicing in this field too, should also be kind of aware of these previous pieces that you've mentioned. You know, one of the things that really resonated with me as I was reading you and the co-author's introduction to the special issue was that this isn't just some like niche sub area of technical communication or something it gets put into you know one anthology and then only picked up if you're studying black tpc particularly mm -hmm. this is just part of technical communication that just hasn't been given the same attention as other aspects of technical communication mm -hmm. is that one of the approaches that you all took when thinking about how you wanted to frame the special issue mm -hmm. yeah definitely you know we were thinking that you know a lot of the work that has been done um over you know the course of decades that has already been historicized but maybe has not been given the same amount of attention it can fall under the umbrella of you know tc from user experience to community engagement to um you know gender studies feminist practices um computers and writing um technology you know digital research like that's why there's so many different uh, 
categories also on the resource guide, which I think helped authors who wanted to submit an article. They, even if they had not heard of the term Black TPC, they were able to identify with one of those categories because they were like, oh yeah, I've been doing work like this. You know, I'm, I'm already doing work at the intersections of, let's say, user experience from the perspective of, you know, um, Black individuals. So I really do think that we wanted to emphasize from the very beginning of this work that this is not just a niche area, you know, this is technical and professional communication. As a conclusion for this, I'm, you know, you mentioned your teaching and assigning this special issue to a course you also talked a little bit more about your own research. So I'm wondering what's next for you? What are you working on right now? So what is next for me? Um, I would love to work on, you know, getting a book out about the work I have already done, you know, in my dissertation that looked at Black women entrepreneurs and how identity and race and just their experiences not only have impacted them, you know, as entrepreneurs, but also how they have strategized and have they how they have used the social media platforms to bring a brand to life. So I'm really invested in continuing to do work on Black women entrepreneurs, but also continuing to do work at the intersections of race and culture in um, business settings. So because I'm online so much and I'm interested in digital research, I would love to look at how people are building their brand online and what are some of the strategies that they are using to reach diverse audiences. Absolutely. That sounds like really important work. So if you have not read the special issue, this is your sign. So go and read it, read the introduction, read the articles, assign it in your classroom. And, you know, um, I hope that it will help you uh, rethink your work, but also energize you to continue to do cutting edge work in the field. Mm -hmm.